General, thank you very much. Uh, let me explain what we're going to do this morning. Uh, we are initially going to have an opportunity to hear from uh, Christine Barney that the Attorney General briefly introduced. Uh, Congressman Artur Davis is here with us as well as uh, uh, Commissioner Sparks. Uh, we're going to have an opportunity to ask a few questions of this panel. We will break for a short period of time, reconvene a, a larger panel of producers and growers, uh, and have the same kind of question and answer format uh, in the morning session. Uh, then uh, I think we turn it over to, uh, to uh, uh, General Varney for uh, the afternoon session, which will give folks uh, additional panel discussions and opportunities for Q&A. Uh, we do want this to be as interactive as we possibly can have, and we do want to hear uh, from as many people as we can. Let me first and foremost introduce very briefly the three members of the first panel, uh, and then I will uh, uh, turn to the Attorney General with a question and, and, and to each of the individual panelists for a question so that they can make a, a, a statement uh, in response. Uh, as the General indicated, uh, Christine Varney was confirmed as, as an Assistant Attorney General for the Antitrust Division in April 2009. Uh, she has held leadership positions in both the public and private sector. From 1998 to 2009, she was a partner with Hogan and Harson, uh, a very uh, significant and prestigious firm in Washington, D.C., where she served in a dual capacity as a member of the firm's antitrust practice group and the head of the Internet practice group. From 94 to 97, 1994 to 97, she served as a Federal Trade Commissioner at the Federal Trade Commission and was a leading official on a wide variety of Internet and competition issues. Prior to her service there, she served as an assistant to the President and Secretary uh, to the cabinet during the Clinton administration. Uh, she is joined by Congressman Artur Davis, uh, no stranger to the folks here. Uh, the Congressman was reelected in 2008 to serve his fourth term in the U.S. House of Representatives. He represents the 7th Congressional District here in Alabama and serves as a member of the Ways and Means Committee. Uh, he is a member of the Congressional Black Caucus and resides in Birmingham, Alabama. He was also appointed to the senior whip team for the Democratic Caucus of the 109th Congress and is the co-chair of the Centrist House uh, New Democrat Coalition, as well as the Southern Regional Co-Chair for the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee. Uh, the Congressman Davis and I became first acquainted uh, as a result of our affiliation with the Democratic Leadership Council. Uh, joining uh, the Congressman is the Honorable Ron Starks, who serves as your Commissioner of Agriculture and Industries, first elected in 2002, easily won re-election to a second term in 2006. Uh, in 1999, uh, Commissioner Sparks was appointed Assistant Commissioner of Agriculture and Industry. He has completed terms as President of the Southern Association of State Departments of Agriculture and most recently served as the President of the National Association of State Departments of Agriculture. Commissioner Sparks continues to serve with that uh, commission at, on the Executive Committee and that is an opportunity that we uh, look forward to each month uh, to visit uh, from the uh, USDA with the State Ag Commissioners and Secretaries to make sure that we have a, uh, a seamless uh, communication system. So these are the three panelists and I think, uh, General, if I could uh, start with you and, and, and give you a chance to uh, sort of expand a little bit more. Uh, I clearly want to thank you for attending this workshop and certainly appreciate the collaboration your department has provided uh, with our department. It's truly historic. As you know and as the folks in this room probably know, uh, poultry enforcement under the Packers and Stockyards Act is divided between our two agencies. Uh, this makes, I think, communication and coordination very critical. In years past, growers have been frustrated with what they feel is a lack of coordination and a sense that no one can help them. Do you have a sense about what we could do to improve the communication and coordination with respect to this enforcement? Well, I, I certainly one think one of the things that we have to do is exactly what we are doing now, which is to give people an opportunity to uh, interact with those people like ourselves who have the responsibility for running um, the departments that are have as their responsibility the enforcement of, of that act. Uh, I think we also have to come up with ways in which we interact with each other uh, in ways frankly better than we have in the past. Uh, I don't think the Department of Justice again quite frankly has been nearly as active as it needed to be. Uh, we have tried to reach out to our uh, our counterparts at the Department of Agriculture and to establish what I think is in some ways a historic relationship um, with an understanding of the expertise that we can bring um, to these questions and with a respect for the deep expertise and experience that the Department of Agriculture has um, in this regard. It seems to me that without 
all of the relevant agencies of the executive branch actually functioning working working together speaking with one another we're not going to be in a position to give you all the kind of service frankly the kind of government that you deserve the kind of effective action that I think this government is capable of providing and so that is why we are here but it is also why when we leave and when we are back in Washington the communication between our departments will will continue general thanks very much and for the purposes of the group here today I want to make one introduction of the USDA official primarily because if there are difficult questions relating to the Packers and Stockyards Act I want Dudley Butler Dudley you want to stand up who is in charge of that area to be able to answer them so that's the man you want to go to I don't think that was I don't think I just did you a favor I want to now turn to to Congressman Davis congressman just be from your vast awareness and knowledge as you travel around your congressional district in the state your thoughts about competition in the poultry industry and what perhaps needs to happen in order to make sure that everyone is being treated fairly thank you mr. secretary and let me begin by just greeting you and the Attorney General mr. secretary you may recall several years ago after our DLC partnership you came to the state of Alabama and you had a chance to talk to some Democrats in Jefferson County and it was good to see you then and mr. Attorney General it's always good to welcome you back to your kind of sort of adopted state some of you may remember the Attorney General on the state of Alabama in 2009 only a few weeks after his being sworn in as the first african-american attorney general of the united states he came to sell Alabama and he honored history and he honored the whole state by standing in the pulpit at Brown's Chapel on Jubilee Sunday and mr. attorney general people continue to remember that visit not quite as much as they remember Barack Obama coming but you're a close second and it meant a lot that you came that day and I thank you for that again let me before I answer your question I want to pay tribute to both of these individuals who are seated to my immediate left because of something the US Congress is about to do but it would not have happened without the leadership of the Secretary Vilsack and Attorney General Holder some of you in this room have a vital interest in a fair and just resolution of the Pickford case that has consumed so many people and so many families for close to 20 years now several years ago working with Democrats and Republicans in Congress we managed to reopen the Pickford litigation and we included those provisions in the bipartisan 2008 farm bill well earlier this year Secretary Vilsack and Attorney General Holder made an announcement that this long running long festering staying on the agriculture system in the United States was ready to be settled and I'm happy to sit here and report to you that in Congress's final days before the Memorial Day recess the House of Representatives is poised to pass legislation that will include a 1.4 billion dollar settlement for Pickford litigants that would not have happened without the vision of this Attorney General this Agriculture Secretary and this President so please give them a hand for that accomplishment let me go directly to the secretary's question mr. secretary the best way I can answer that question is to share with you a brief anecdote that I recall from my travels around the state several years ago I was attending a farmers conference and candidly I did not profess myself to be an expert on poultry farming I was there to learn and to listen I said my piece and then at the end I I took questions did more listening than talking as I was about to leave and I did what we politicians always are reluctant to do I says there any one person who hasn't had a chance to speak who wants to get in there's a gentleman from North Alabama made his way to the microphone he said mr. Davis I'm a poultry farmer been a poultry farmer for 33 years my son is 22 
he is graduating Auburn University, a very fine school in East Alabama, Mr. Secretary. And he said, my son came to me a few weeks ago and said, you know, Dad, you've been a poultry farmer for 32 years. I have decided that I want to follow in your footsteps and I want to be a poultry farmer. The gentleman looked out at the audience and said, Mr. Davis, first thing I did is I said to my son, well, I'm going to put together a list of contacts that you may want to talk to, as you know. Dads and sons can't always work together. So I put together a list of contacts I want you to talk to. And then he said something that stunned everybody in the room. He said, I had no intention of calling a single one of those contacts on behalf of my son. Everyone got quiet. And he said, I waited, let several weeks go by. And my son came back and said, Dad, have you heard from any of those guys? you know, that you said I need to talk to about getting into the poultry business. And this gentleman said to us that day that he kept giving his son the runaround. And everyone's sitting there wondering, why would a father give his son the runaround when his son was trying to go into the family business? The gentleman looked out at all of us that day, about 150 people, and said, Mr. Davis, I have done this for 32 years. I do not have the confidence that my son can make it in the poultry business. I know he's smart. I know he has everything he needs in terms of work ethic. I know he has the character. My wife and I taught him that. But I do not have confidence he can make it in the family business. And I remember everyone in that room was sitting there wondering, have we gotten to a state in farming and agriculture in the state of Alabama where when a son wants to walk in his father's footsteps, the son doesn't feel empowered to take his son along that path? We have a lot of poultry farmers who are here today. I suspect General Holder, Secretary Vilsack, if we had a chance to inventory some of them, I don't know if that gentleman is here. He may not be, but I suspect there are stories like his in this room. And I didn't have a chance to quiz him or to cross-examine him about why he didn't have confidence that his son could make it. Maybe it's high energy costs. Maybe it's the difficulty of sustaining a small business because running a farm is running a small business, as all of you appreciate. Maybe it's the lack of competition. Maybe it's predatory pricing. Maybe it's predatory relationships between producers and management. I didn't cross-examine him on those things that day. But that man in that room communicated a pain in his voice. And all of us who care about the future of this state and the future of this region have to understand that we cannot walk away from our farms. The reality is that in this state, Farms have lost 76% of their value over the last decade. That means Alabama is hurting because we're not fully maximizing what our farms can do. So I am glad to see the Attorney General and the Secretary of Agriculture fully engaged in this very unique partnership. Because I want men like the individual who stood up at that meeting to be able to say, I welcome my son into the poultry profession. I welcome my son into the family business. I'm confident he can make it. I'm confident he can thrive. There's something fundamentally wrong when a father has to say to a son, do not walk the path that I walked. Final comments I'll make, Mr. Secretary. We have the outstanding new president of this school, Dr. Eugeni, who's here today, who's seated on the first row. And we have a pretty good crowd of folk. Everyone in this room ought to appreciate it is not an accident or a coincidence that we're at Alabama A&M. As Jay-Z likes to say, they could be any place in the world right now. Some of y'all got that. <laughs> they could be a number of places in Alabama. They could be at Auburn. They could be at AUM. They could have gone to Selma. 
They could have found an excuse to do this in Birmingham as the flights get into Birmingham more easily sometimes. But they are here, Dr. Eugene, at this school, which has meant so much to Northeast Alabama. For anyone who doubts that Alabama A&M is 100% on its way, that Alabama A&M is one of the proudest institutes in this region, turn around and look behind you and see what Alabama A&M can do. Dr. Eugenie, it's a tribute to your leadership that we're here today. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. Actually, Congressman, we were uh, planning a competition hearing on football uh, in one of those other <laughs> universities uh, for the rest of the country. Uh, that'll come later. Uh, Commissioner, I... Yeah, not me, man. <laughs> well, any, you, all kinds of antitrust stuff going on with the bowl, college bowl series. That's right. <laughs> Seemed to work out pretty well this year. Uh, Commissioner, I want to turn to you. Um, you obviously uh, have your ear to the ground uh, with uh, Alabama agriculture and agriculture generally. And I'm just curious, and I think the general is curious, and knowing your thoughts about what we can do to uh, make sure that this playing field is level for the growers and producers, and, and how can we potentially strengthen uh, their position so that this playing field is as level as it could be so that the father has a chance to say to a son, you can participate in this business. Uh, absolutely. And, uh, uh, Mr. Secretary, uh, you're on your own when you start mentioning football in Alabama, okay? <laughs> uh, the first thing I want to do is certainly thank uh, Alabama A&M. Uh, it is great to be back uh, in North Alabama. Uh, Mr. Secretary, uh, I'm one of the fortunate commissioners in this country where I have three land-grant universities with Alabama A&M, Tuskegee, and Auburn, and I'm very proud of, of all three of them, and they do uh, – Yeoman's work for agriculture uh, in this state, and, uh, and I just want to, uh, I'm very proud of them, and I uh, appreciate them. And, and I want to thank you personally for taking your time to come to Alabama along with General Holder. This means a lot to, to us in Alabama, and thank you, uh, Assistant Secretary Barnett, uh, uh, General. Uh, it just means so much for you to come to Alabama and talk, in my opinion, to some of the best farmers you'll ever meet. Uh, I've had the privilege of working with industry and agriculture uh, in this state now for 11 years. And I can tell you it has been a, a great ride uh, uh, to be able to work with these gentlemen. But, you know, there's a key word uh, when we start talking about contracts, we start talking about farmers, we start talking about agriculture. And that key word is profitability. Uh, profitability, uh, it, it's hard to keep anybody in business if they don't see a way to make a living. And that's the struggle that farmers have today, is to try to figure out how they're going to make a living and how they're going to make ends meet. And General Holder, when you started quoting Dr. George Washington Carver, it makes me feel good because as many of these individuals that's ever heard me speak, I talk about Dr. George Washington Carver also. And Dr. George Washington Carver once said, a man with no vision is a man with no hope. And that's why all of these people are here today, is because they do have vision, and they do have hope, and they want to support their families, and they want to support agriculture. The poultry industry is extremely important to Alabama. It's over a $2 billion industry. The way I view the poultry industry is a partnership. It is a partnership of farmers and partnership of companies. And what I have learned as Commissioner of Agriculture for the past seven years is that sometimes in a lot of partnerships, communication breaks down. And when communication breaks down, that's where the hardship and the difficulties come. Because many of these farmers that invest in the poultry industry invest their lives, they invest their home, they invest their land, they invest their future, they invest their kids' future, they invest their kids' education. And when there's a lack of communication of not understanding each other and the troubles that they're going through, then it creates adversity. And that's what I would hope that we would get out of this meeting today, is that farmers understand companies and companies understand farmers, and we find a way to move this industry forward in a very positive way.
because the poultry industry is a great industry. Uh, but they are going through some very difficult times when it comes to the investment of their home, the price that bills, uh, utility costs, uh, uh, labor costs. Uh, but on the other hand, companies are going through those similar issues. So I would hope that through all of, all of this today that we find some common ground that companies communicate better with our farmers and that farmers communicate better with our companies and that we find a way to move this business forward because without each other, there is no poultry industry. Uh, we've got to have each other to make this industry work. Uh, and we've got to understand what each other are going through. Uh, uh, the technologies, and I think we need to find a way to reward uh, good farmers that use the technology that these great uh, land grant universities afford them. And uh, so that's, that's where I would hope. There is a great risk for farmers and there's a great risk for companies. And we've just got to find the common ground and the communication uh, that allows us to move forward. Commissioner, thank you very much. I, I, I think it's important for uh, us to reflect not just on the, on the industry's significance to farmers, but also on the industry's significance to consumers. Uh, very few people in America appreciate what American agriculture and the food industry provides to them. Uh, every single one of us has probably 10 to 15 percent more disposable income in our pockets from our hard-earned paychecks by virtue of the fact that we have the least expensive food as a percentage of income of any developed nation in the world. And so Americans have this extraordinary opportunity to maybe buy a nicer house or a car or go on a vacation in large part because those food dollars are stretched so far in this country. Uh, and so it is important for us to continue to support farmers in general and, uh, and uh, uh, Assistant Attorney General Varney, you might find it interesting to know that, that these farmers out here, if you took a look at their total farm income, family farm income, across the country, only 9% of it last year came from farming operations, which meant that 91% had to come from some other place, which means that these people, in many cases, are working more than the farming job they have. They're working off the farm, or their spouse is working off the farm, or they're both working off the farm. Uh, so, Commissioner, your comments are, 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 are certainly important. And you brought up the issue of communication, and I think, as the General indicated, um, uh, the departments have to do a better job of communicating, and certainly the USDA has a responsibility to, to, uh, to, to be a better communicator both with farmers as well as with the Department of Justice. And I'd like to ask uh, the, the Assistant Attorney General, who is really spearheading this effort, um, maybe, you could, uh, maybe you could tell us a little bit more about the enforcement matters the Antitrust uh, Division handles and, and, and how poultry enforcement is actually handled at the department so people have a sense of, of your role in all of this. Thanks, Secretary, and thank you, uh, President, for having us here at this wonderful university. It's delightful to be here. Uh, let me start by saying that when we raised the idea of doing these hearings to better understand what the issues were in the intersection between agriculture and, and uh, USDA policy and the Department of Justice policy, both Secretary Vilsack and General Holder immediately said, yes, when are they? We're going. So from the highest levels of the Obama administration, this has been something that we've cared deeply about. And you might recall at our last hearing uh, in Iowa, which was the one where we kicked this off, it was at a table just like this where we were hearing um, in, the, in the seed and grain industry about the different avenues that at the USDA and the Department of Justice were pursuing. And at the table we said, well, why don't we create a joint task force? That's where this task force that you've been hearing about today came from was the meeting in Iowa, and I expect today, by listening to you, we'll come up with some additional activities that we need to be doing that could um, address some of the problems that, that you're experiencing. Um, let me just give you a brief overview. At the Department of Justice in the Antitrust Division, we essentially have three broad areas of law enforcement that we undertake. In the Sherman Act enforcement of Section 1, we generally prosecute criminal cartels price fixing among companies. If any of you saw the movie The Informant, that was an antitrust division criminal prosecution. Under Section 2 of the Sherman Act, we prosecute large companies that have a market share in any particular industry and are abusing that market share in any way that's predatory or exclusionary. 
And then under Section 7 of the Clayton Act, we examine mergers, and any merger that may lead to a substantial lessening of competition, we are required to block. At the Department of Agriculture, they administer, and, and the Secretary introduced, the Packers and Stockyard Act. And the intersection between a regulated industry such as poultry under that, that act and the uh, enforcement of the competition laws under the antitrust division is very complex, exceedingly difficult. And what we have found, at least in the time that we've been here, is that the more we work together, the more we understand the industry in its totality. As you've heard from both the Secretary and the General, we understand the poultry in industry is very, very vertically integrated. That presents a unique set of challenges when we're looking at competition. At the same time, the retail side of the industry has become very vertically integrated, or very consolidated. In 1992, for example, the top four supermarkets had 17% of grocery sales. Today, the top four stores have over 40% of all sales. So you've got consolidation on the retail side, you've got vertical integration on the production side, and that can lead to a lot of imbalances in the system. In a regulated industry, where you look to correct those imbalances is a combination of using the tools that the antitrust division has in concert with the tools that the USDA has through enforcement of the Packers and Stockyard Act. So, Secretary, what we're doing is working very closely with your staff to help un them educate us on where they need the antitrust enforcement. You talked about the rule that you've been working on. We've been giving you at the staff level a lot of input into that rule to ensure that when it likely undergoes any judicial review, when it becomes final, it's sustainable from our perspective. As a matter of fact, when the USDA's rules are challenged, it is actually the Department of Justice that represents the USDA. So I think over the years, there's been varying degrees of collaboration between the two agencies. I think all of our staff uh, have informed me that there has never been the degree of collaboration that there, has, that there is now. So from the highest levels all the way through the, the staff on the ground, the staff here on the ground, you can be sure that whatever is happening at USDA, they're involving us. Whatever we're hearing about, they're the experts. We're going back to them. Our mission with the USDA is to protect the consumer welfare of the citizens of the United States, whether they be producers or whether they be growers, through, insu through ensuring that our markets are open and fair and competitive. And that's what we're doing. Great, thank you. Uh, we've got a few minutes left, and what I'd like to do is to give uh, the commissioner and the congressman uh, an additional question and then give the uh, general any uh, closing comments for this particular section uh, that he'd like to share. Uh, Commissioner, let me uh, go back to you and, and simply uh, ask you this question. If we reconvened, uh, say, 10 years from now, what would you hope we would be able to say about the poultry industry that would be a little bit different than it is today, or, or how would you see it different? Well, that we keep, what I would hope is that we keep our markets open, that we compete in a global world, that we uh, uh, that the integrators and the uh, farmers have a better line of communication of understanding each other's responsibilities and investments. And uh, I would hope that uh, that 10 years from now, rather than it being a $2 billion industry in Alabama, it's a $10 billion industry. Uh, but I just think there's a lot of opportunities here, uh, working with our universities, using the technology that's available to allow these uh, and reward those technologies and allow these uh, growers to compete uh, uh, in, the, in the marketplace under, under the restraints that they, that they have to live under. So I would hope that, uh, and I believe this, is that if we, if we have that line of communication and break down those barriers, that growers understand the companies and companies understand the growers and that we have that line of communication, I think that's where the disconnect is, Mr. Secretary is that sometimes, even, even though we're partnershiping, they don't understand each other's responsibilities. And I think the more we understand that, then the, then the poultry industry moves forward and we all benefit from it. Congressman, your thoughts? One important thing, Mr. Secretary, that I think that you and this Justice Department recognize is an anti-competitive environment is an inefficient environment. 
And that's worth spending a few seconds asserting to a group of folks who don't think about these issues every day. Sometimes there's a mindset, it's thunder, those are the mic. Sometimes there's a mindset in the American economy that if we just get out of the way, if government is laissez-faire, if the Justice Department sits on the sidelines, that things will naturally happen. And we are comfortable in that belief, many of us, because we like our free market system, we like our capitalist system, and we venerate that. It's both a value and an economic model. But the reality, as presidents from Teddy Roosevelt to Barack Obama have understood, sometimes we gotta be watchful. Sometimes we have to be vigilant. Sometimes we have to make sure that in the name of an open market, we don't crowd out competition. In the name of efficiency, we don't do something that's enormously inefficient. And Mr. Secretary, you put your finger on it earlier. The American consumer is a very privileged person. The American consumer lives in one of the few highly vibrant societies in the world where most of us have routine access to most consumer items and most of us have a reasonable opportunity to climb to the next economic lever. Even in the midst or in the aftermath of the incredibly deep recession we've had, that's one of the geniuses of the American economy. If we get this mix that the commissioner talks about right in the next 10 years, if we get it right in the next two decades, we'll preserve the consumer's capacity to have access to the market we will preserve the industry's capacity to be productive and efficient in the right kind of way. And finally, we will preserve the men and women who are laboring on farms day in and day out. We will preserve your capacity to keep doing what you do. Because that's what I want to end with. The number of men and women in this state, in this region, who've walked away from farming in the last 40 years is aching. So many people who grew up on farming are walking away from it and it's draining vitality from whole parts of the state. We've got to reconnect those individuals. We've got to give them the promise that they deserve and if we do it, it won't simply be good for farmers and agribusiness. It will help lift up the economy of the entire state and the entire region. Congressman, thank you very much. Uh, you know, to the Congressman's point, uh, we've lost over a million farmers in that 40-year period around the country. And not only have we lost farmers, but we've lost a lot of population in our rural communities. And General, you might be interested to know that one-sixth of America's population, about 16, 17 percent of Americans live in rural America, but 45 percent of those who serve us in uniform come from those small towns uh, and from rural America. And as we see a, 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 a squeeze on the folks in rural America and the economy that suffers in rural America, and there are fewer and fewer young people being able to stay in rural America, you, you have to begin to wonder, are, are there going to be enough folks to take care of all of our, our military needs and, and our law enforcement needs? Where are these folks, where are these folks going to come from? Uh, so, uh, Congressman, you're, you, you, you've got a good point there. Uh, General, your closing comments before we uh, close this first session. Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, although we are focusing on agriculture generally, the poultry uh, industry specifically here today, we're really talking about something that I think in, in a lot of ways is more basic than that. And it, I think it echoes the last two sets of comments we've heard. Um, the American culture, um, who we are, as Americans is really, you know, if you look historically, is really based on our agricultural um, industry, the agricultural component of what America is about. The values that we hold as Americans, I think, were developed um, on farms. Now, I'm a city guy and proud to be, uh, proud to be from, from New York, don't hold that against me. But I'm also a person who um, knows a little about the history of, of, of this nation. and. I think it's important for us to make sure that we hold on to the values that were developed in our rural areas um, that continue to sustain this nation and differentiate this nation from, you know, many other nations around the world. It's what makes, you know, this nation great. What we want to do is come up with a way in which we, can, in government, can help to make sure that there are efficiencies, that there is fairness there. Um, and that our economic, the economic system that we have, 
is consistent with the values that we always espouse. Um, we're not looking for government to direct things, um, but government can play a role as a referee at times. Um, the Obama administration is not looking one way or the other way as much as just to try to uh, make sure that fairness is the thing that permeates um, the agricultural sector. And in doing so, I think we will do the greatest service, which is to perhaps reverse the trends that we have heard about people leaving um, farms, people not being able to pass on um, to their sons and daughters the ability to do the very things that, uh, that they have done and the things that have shaped this country, the things that have made this nation great. Um, our economy and our well-being is, is at stake, but in some ways I think, you know, the soul of this nation is also something that we are fighting to preserve. And that's something that you all, um, I think, are key parts of. And so what we want to do, as I said at the beginning, is really to listen to you, to figure out ways in which we can be uh, of service to you, and in doing so, uh, make sure that we preserve uh, the, na the great nation um, that we have always had and that we want to continue to have. General, thank you. Uh, we are going to, to take a, a break for, uh, for about uh, 15, 20 minutes or so, try to reconvene here uh, for the next roundtable, which will be of uh, poultry growers, uh, where we'll talk to uh, growers and former producers uh, about their expectations. That will then be followed by a lunch break, and then we will reconvene after lunch for an opportunity for the public generally to provide testimony that will be followed by another roundtable discussion uh, of uh, individuals both in, in terms of government as well as academic and, and the producer uh, and industry uh, viewpoint and then additional opportunities for public testimony and closing remarks. So we will break for uh, about 15 or 20 minutes.